Team members often treat selecting the right sprint length as an intellectual exercise. They think that if they sit down and think hard enough, they'll select the appropriate length right from the first day using Scrum. For some teams, this may be true. But for most teams, the easiest way to select the right sprint length is through the standard Agile advice of inspect and adapt. Pick a sprint length, try it out to see how it goes, and then consider changing. So, in this video, let's take a look at some of the warning signs a team can look for that will tell them they've picked the wrong sprint length. We'll look first at some indicators that the chosen sprint length is too short. We'll then look at some indicators that the chosen length is too long. One of the first things team members will notice if their sprint length is too short is the trouble they'll have in finishing work within a sprint. Before you blame the sprint length, though, remember that this is a very common problem for teams new to Agile as they are learning to work iteratively, especially teams that are used to taking months to complete a feature. What I'm talking about here are teams that are having trouble finishing work within a sprint because they are doing work that is innately difficult or that requires many different skills to complete. A closely related symptom of sprints that are too short is that the team struggles to split product backlog items small enough to be done in a sprint. Be a little careful with this one, though, as this is a common challenge that affects almost every team new to Agile. Before deciding if this indicates your team needs a longer sprint, consider whether this is a temporary problem that will improve with experience. A third symptom of overly short sprints is that the overhead of sprinting starts to feel too great. The overhead of sprinting includes things like meetings, manual testing, and anything a team needs to do once per sprint. In theory, each of the per sprint meetings should take proportionately longer with longer sprints. This doesn't always happen, however, because there is a bit of overhead to each meeting. If a team needs to do manual testing, that can definitely become a burden with short sprints. A final symptom I want to mention is that team members may feel overly stressed by short sprints. For example, with a one-week sprint, the sprint review is never more than a week away. Some team members don't like feeling that pressure. In some cases, team members feel that such short time boxes don't leave them time for trying creative, innovative solutions. A programmer with a deadline a few days away may be reluctant to try a wildly different but possibly better approach if it won't leave him enough time to revert to a safer and surer approach if necessary. Let's turn our attention to some of the things a team might see if their chosen sprint length is too long. The most common indicator of the sprint being too long is the frequency with which the product owner needs to interrupt the team to change what team members are working on. If you work in a rapidly changing industry, you may have a hard time with four-week sprints. A product owner in that type of company may not be able to keep new items out of the sprints. If changes are being introduced very often, the team will likely be better with shorter sprints. Another indicator that sprints are too long is sprint planning becomes difficult because of how far ahead the team is looking. Ask me what I'm going to work on this week, and I can give you a pretty reliable answer. Ask me about next week, and I've still got a decent idea. Ask me what I'll be working on three and four weeks from now, and that's a tough question. If teams are struggling during the sprint planning meeting or frequently deliver much more or less than planned, the sprint may be too long. One final indicator that the chosen sprint length is too long is that the sprint may start out feeling too casual, but end feeling too rushed. On sprints of just about any length, it is common for team members to feel less intensity at the start and more intensity at the end. The longer the sprint is, the greater this change in intensity is between the first day and the last. Some teams respond by starting without any sense of urgency at all, but then paying for their slow start at the end. Working without an early sense of urgency results in less work being accomplished during the sprint, and such teams generally benefit from moving to shorter sprints. Even though I'm advocating an inspect and adapt approach to helping a team determine its best sprint length, I want to be clear that I recommend finding the right sprint length and sticking with it. I don't suggest you change lengths frequently. Pick a length that seems right, try it, and see how it goes. I normally recommend trying anything new for two sprints. Just about everything feels uncomfortable the first time. In the second retrospective after changing sprint length, discuss how the sprint went. Does a new length seem right? 
Or would the team be better trying a different length or even returning to the original sprint length? As with most things, taking an inspect and adapt approach to finding the answer will be better than a lot of upfront thinking about the issue.